So just another quick video uh, based on a change in the latest version of Virtual DJ uh, that makes the cut effect maybe a little bit more useful uh, when it comes to to cutting other stuff beside the actual track. So I'll get back to that in a second. But as some of you maybe know, uh, it's pretty common to use the, the noise effect as build up. So if I play, play a track here, and select noise down here on my color effects. I can make some interesting top of thing things, maybe just before the mix, or maybe just to build up slowly, and then cut it out again, like that. Very common practice. And then it's also pretty common to, uh, to actually cut that in and out, and the easiest way to do that is by applying it to the opposite deck. So, if I, instead of using the noise over here, use it over here while I play the track. Then I can actually cut it in using the crossfader. That's of course much more efficient if you actually have a crossfader. Right now I'm using the mouse. So if you're using a mouse or a keyboard, it can be a better idea to, to do something that can cut it in for you. For instance, like this little thing that I mapped that simply puts the crossfader at 50% while I press the button. So let's say it's where we're here as a starting point and I play the track. Then I can cut in the noise effects here by using this. Like that. Change a little bit. So that's useful um, if you don't have a crossfader or if your crossfader hand is kind of slow compared to what you want to do. You can do stuff like that. You've always been able to do that. But another thing that you can also do is that you can use the cut effect to cut the noise effect. So if I play a track here and I turn on the cut effect like this, turn up the noise, it cuts the noise but it also cuts the track. So that's probably not what we want. So what we maybe want instead is we wanna cut the noise on the opposite deck. The problem was that using cut, uh, which is based on the BPM, only used to work when the track was playing. So if you wanted to use the cut effect on the opposite deck, the track needed to be playing kind of defeating the purpose, because then you would also hear the, the, the opposite track when you used to cut. But that's not the case anymore. So now I can actually play a track and then do noise on the opposite deck. Turn that up, like this, and then use the cut effect to change it. Like that. So, what does that take? Well, the opposite deck then needs to be in time, so it can be the, the, the same track as you're playing on the other deck, so you simply just use the BPM, or it can be another track uh, in the same BPM. So uh, maybe the next track you wanna play that's lined up because uh, uh, you want it to, to feel like a natural continuation, just like if you did a regular mix. Because if I turn that BPM of that one down like this, and I try to do the same thing. So then I is turned up and I'm cutting it in with the cut effect. Then you can hear it's out of time. So it actually needs to be the same BPM for it to sound good so I can try again. And then the cut effect is basically in time. Almost in time, so this is better. So that's a new cut effect, uh, the new change to the cut effect. So you can actually cut up the noise in timing of the BPM, even when the track not playing. But still, it's a lot of things you have to do if you uh, uh, just to do this. Uh, so maybe you can make it a little bit simpler. Uh, so I've tried to do that by uh, creating this little script. So what does that do? Well, it makes sure the filter select color effect is actually noise. 
Then it uh, sets the, the slider on the cut effect, the first one, to 100%, so it's full cut. Then it sets the beat to uh, zero, zero beats, so that's the length of the cut, if you will. And then it turns it on. So that means instead of doing all that stuff, I can simply play here. So I can put this, so I cut this off now. And I can simply play here. And I can just click this button. And then when I turn up the noise, it cut it in in time. Like that, and you can still hear it going afterwards. And turn it again. And turn this over again. Then I've also mapped the slider up here to, uh, to adjust the length. So I can actually do this. and then make it faster. And turn it off again. So that's a lot of stuff, and you can make that sound pretty cool as a build-up. But then, of course, you probably want to get out of this build-up again. And that's a lot of buttons to press, especially if you want to do it as a build-up to a mix. So what can you do about that? Well, you can script the actual turning it off and actually doing the, uh, the mix uh, as part uh, of a script. So I've done a third script here called Drop Track. And what it does is it figures out which deck you're on. And then it simply <clears throat> cues and stops the right deck. And it turns the filter back to 50%. And then it uh, plays the opposite deck. So in effect, uh, and it also stops the cut the cut effect so in effect it actually does the mix for you and stops all this stuff that you've been starting so if i try to do that then i can play over here and i can turn this on and i can start using it that's another important part you have to click this on in time let me try again like that, and build it up. And then I can click this one to turn everything off and do the mix. Maybe do that on the one. So one is coming up. Like that. And now everything is turned on or turned off, and the opposite deck is playing after you've done the mix. Based on a build up using the noise effect with the cut on top of it to cut it in and out instead of using the crossfader. So that was a little trick that's not been enabled because the, the cut effect can actually cut up uh, the noise effects even when the track is, is not playing. And of course, these four scripts that I've created will be in the video description.